like to share the event. Hold on. I... On, my, on my Facebook and on my TikTok. I don't know how you how do you share it. Hold on. I got it right here. Am I right to you? Every 10 or 15 years, a film is produced that is so overwhelming, so forceful in its impact, that it becomes deeply embedded in the mind. Persons under 18 will not be admitted. this experience more enjoyable for everyone. We hope you'll refrain from talking during the show. Enjoy the movie. Thank you. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. We have very active lifestyles. It's not all wandering the countryside aimlessly or scaring passing motorists. And we all love a good cup of joe. And there's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds Coffee is my guilty pleasure. Bold, robust, delicious. 
It's coffee that can wake the dead. <laughs> With over a dozen different roasts and flavors, Deadly Grounds can satisfy the most finicky of coffee addicts. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. Hey, hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. You're watching Still Token With. My name's Leo. I'm the monkey behind the keyboard here. We have an awesome show scheduled for you. And don't adjust your screen. We know we're on early. Just get used to it and sit back, relax, have an awesome time. And without further ado, Benjamin, how's it going, bud? Uh, <coughs> better now that we got the time difference figured out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you, know, he, you know, our guest tonight thinks he's a fucking rock star, apparently. He shows up when you feel Shows up when he feels like it, you know. I'll get there when I get there. It's no big. Deal. No, no. We actually have a great show tonight. I mean, we, uh, I'm not going to steal Jeff Slender by announcing the guest, but he is coming to us from the UK. So it's like fucking ten o'clock over there. You know, we made him stay awake, and uh, yeah, so <clears throat> it ought to be a good one. Oh yeah, totally, totally. And uh, you know, before we get to Jeff, we also have a couple fuckers here that need to say hi. <laughs> what do. is up? Glad to be Rico back. Rico and Eric, how's it going? It's going good, man. I'm Rico, and this is my homie, Eric. Uh, nice to be back. Thanks for having us, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate it, man. We miss you guys a lot. Yeah, I miss you too. But I figured, uh, especially with our <coughs> guest tonight and your background, this would be a great show for you guys to come on and co-host with us. And, you know, just in case I run out of questions. That's all. <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> I haven't seen that happen yet. But yeah, okay. I haven't seen that. We've been talking about uh, it. Well, you, you haven't watched the show past five minutes anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Leo, it's almost five o'clock. Don't you have to go somewhere? Oh, shut up. <laughs> hey, how did we lose? We just lost. We just lost Jeff. You got a phone call. What the flying freak over? <sighs> Man, it's a good thing we showed up. Right? No shit. Yeah. I don't uh, know what the hell. We'll have to wait for his ass to come back so he can announce the guest. Or you can well, do I don't think we have to wait for him, do we? No, I don't think we do either. No, 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 no my man. That 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 is that is unacceptable. <laughs> somebody, somebody, he's back. Somebody, uh, somebody. Uh, Looks yeah. like he's back. He's, Maybe. He's, hey, there he, there is. he is. Missed you. There I am. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This this thing was running choppy on me, so I came out and came in. Huh? She liked that. Ooh. No. <laughs> you chose you chose now to do that, Jeffrey. Right, right. We've been backstage for forty five minutes right? shooting the shit. It's all good. It's well, okay. We were playing with Legos. Yeah, sorry. What we playing okay, with Legos? Well, get to yeah, it. We were play, playing with Who's our guest? Legos. Who's our guest? Uh, Martin Webster. I oh. know who our guest is. He's well, then you're supposed to inter Yeah. That's a hell of an you know, introduction. So instead of me, instead of me fucking shit up, why don't we just bring Martin in and he can tell us all about himself? He's not a fucking police. I'm pizza. Oh my god! No, no, it's toast with my mate. British toast with my oh. British toast. <laughs> toast with my mate. With my mate. With lots of no marmite. Have you heard of marmite in the in the states? Mm. You no, I'm not it. sure if we pronounce it the same way. Bov Bovril. Bovril or um, <laughs> beef, beef ex yast extract. Oh. oh, no, no, no. That's no. not. That's Filthy not stuff. It looks like dog shit on a on toast base. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's something. I've armies. got brown teeth. I've not been eating shit. I've just been eating marmite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not in the military anymore. You don't have to. Who hurt yeah, you? Yeah, you don't have to do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we had some bad. We had some bad stuff. You guys got MREs over there? No, we had British ration packs, but we used to we would buy your MREs like off uh, eBay to because they're so much better than the shit that we was eating. You think our MREs are better? They if you're not better. Better. <laughs> Rico's and eyes. you don't, you don't yeah, need to light a fire. Rich. You don't need to. You even get yeah. that little cooking yeah. device, don't you? You get the cooking yeah. device. Yeah, you get a heating bag, which yeah, you can't yeah we got we got a light a fire. We got a light a fire to um. Yeah. Oh no, fuck! See, you guys, fuck no. We got told you you're just gonna eat it like that. It's like, and if you got veggie omelet, 
my man, you deserve a combat action badge just for eating one of those, bro. No doubt. <laughs> We it's taken one for the team, team, literally. Dude, what was your what's your favorite MRE book, sir? Mine's um, mine's number eleven, tuna. Dude, I, I yeah. like I like oh, the beans and so, no, beans no. and sausages. English breakfast, beans and sausages. Ooh, that that oh, that's a okay. good one. Yeah, that I could go with that. One. All right. Yeah. So much there was so many beaks and bums ground up into those sausages. They yeah, always they used the best, the best parts of, of the, the best parts of the pig. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Only the fine they don't waste nothing on the pig. They just ground it so, up. It's like Puerto Rican. We yeah. Puerto Ricans, we don't waste anything on a pig, homie. We eat the yeah. whole thing. Whole thing. Uh, I paid for that whole Tro thing. I'm eating the whole thing. No, yeah. is, even the head yeah. cheese? Trust everything. Everything. everything, bro. Everything. You know how head much cheese. I paid a meal? They call it paid a meal in Puerto Rico. You know how much that is? Bro, it's expensive oh. as shit. Yeah. And in this economy, you better eat the whole damn thing. Yep. <laughs> they actually <laughs> have pickled pig's feet in the bar. Ooh. Oh. My uh, my grandparents used right. to butcher, and my mom would talk about like making head cheese with the uh, with the actual head. Yeah, uh, I bet it that is nice, absolutely right? disgusting, but I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's wild. <laughs> so What's you, you ex forces, Eric? Are you? Are you ex ex yeah, you ex I was in the uh, Navy for a little while. So. Army, oh, brilliant. Thirty-one Bravo military police. Yeah. Oh, awesome! So you would have been arrested. You would have been arrested. <laughs> <in> the, uh, <laughs> If you look at my, he, oh, he, he, he knew the other MPs. He didn't MPs, get arrested. Bro? That's why he didn't get arrested. I think in so. the British forces, it's called the uh, security forces. You guys call them, right? Yeah. Have you heard of Edinburgh Castle in in England? Edinburgh Castle no. in Scotland. In Scotland. Oh, Never in heard Scotland. of Edinburgh. in Scotland? There's this huge castle on like an old disused volcano, and I, I was I was one of the corporals in charge of the the military base, and two military police guys came in drunk, British military police. And then I, I beat them up because they were throwing chips at my gate, man. They were throwing. <laughs> oh. just... And I, yeah, you know and I, to do my, my, the whole guard got arrested because we were protecting the Scottish crown jewels. And like, I was the first time the whole guard got arrested. <laughs> that'll, that's, that'll be down. In, if you go to Edinburgh Castle, that'll be down in the incident book. Look it up. What? Bro, <laughs> that is a story. I think the and craziest you, thing. I think if you've seen Pendleton. That means a duel. Hold on, hold right? on. Have you seen Penitent yet? Yeah, they've seen the film Penitent. We have, have not. You seen no, no, that's why we're we here, not. isn't it? But when there's a there's a red book that opens up in Penitent, and it's it's a military law. Like I've got it up in in me in me what you call the loft, no attic, uh, the ah, the roof yeah. space. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and it's a big red book, and I got given that when I got arrested for beating those two military police up when I was, in the... <laughs> <laughs> and it's in the film. No. <laughs> I got it. The book opens up because he's getting done for for desertion. Dude, wow. I am I speaking? I am I speaking at the right pace or am I like, talking too you fast? Get beat up. Oh, you're good. No, 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 dude. This is yeah. This is perfect. Yeah. I think the craziest thing a military person's done in the U.S. Army was they took a tank, and I think they drove it to Mexico. <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> I think yeah. I think. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold yeah, on. I'm pretty I sure. They, I don't know if they drove it to Mexico. Sold it to Pablo. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's a thing. Uh, a soldier he tried oh, to he, drive okay. it. He, he tried to drive it to to Mexico. Didn't make uh, it. I think it was an Abrams, and uh, he did not make it. Did not make it. <laughs> and he was drunk the whole time doing it. Um. Well, yeah, you wouldn't do that sober. Yeah. You would not invade Mexico sober. Well, sir, you've deployed, right? <laughs> I, yeah, Iraq, Northern Ireland, Sierra Leone. Uh, uh, what year were you in Iraq, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, 2003 to 2004. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, I was 08 to 09. <laughs> I, was, 08. I was in Baghdad. Uh, mm, nice mm. one. We was in ba uh, uh, Baz Alamara. But in I was, JSR? Uh, JSR Alamara? Al Alam, it was called Alamara. Alamara. Yeah. There was a few, there was a few American special forces guys that came into our camp when when the shit hit the fan because obviously they would withdraw into um, military bases when the shit hit the fan and um, that's in my film Diary of a Disgraced Soldier. I've done a documentary about the Iraq War because mm -hmm. I was I was arrested for uh, filming my friends beating up a load of Iraqi um, Iraqi. Um, civilians they were throwing grenades over the you know you know at the end of the day they, they, they were kids they were, they were over a wall grenades. yeah i'm yeah. sensing a theme with you yeah 
I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah, I've been in a lot of trouble. <laughs> were they RKG threes or just M67 grenades? They were they were Russian because uh, oh, oh Russian grenades. Yeah. Yeah. Were they yeah. Russian? Yeah. The old little ra- little round Russian grenades. RKG, um, yeah, the, the parachute one, the airborne grenades. Yeah. No, no, little, just, just a, just a little, like we called it an L2 um, grenade, and uh, you know the probably weighs about one pound, you know. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Where, where, where you would, where the, you would, you would arm it by putting the fly-off lever goes in, you screw it in, and then you pull the pin, and then as the fly-off lever comes off, it. That seems detonates. really complicated for for the Russians. I would think that the Russians are let go of a grenade that blows up and that's it. Like yeah, that, that seems like in America, it's like you pull the pin and then you let go and you pray to Jesus that it blows up everything. Well, you missed a step. Radius. You're supposed to count the three, throw it. Well, if you want, to and then and then pray to Jesus. You know, you <laughs> do you, do you, do you see the difference in the, the equipment? Like because we had Land Rovers. You've heard of Land Rovers, British yes. British Land Rovers. Yeah. Well, we had Land Rovers with bread crates. What you hold the where all the bread would come in, and we would, mm-hmm. they were metal. So we would strap them to the front of our windows because we didn't have any bulletproof glass or anything. So we had <laughs> and chicken wire, and we had chicken wire <laughs> to stop the stones from coming in. And we didn't get issued the visors, so we were like that. We was going through the towns, holding our hands over our faces, and all the stuff. I've got video footage of. My friend gets a rock in the face and it breaks his nose. And I'm filming it, laughing. Damn. And um, yeah, it, it wasn't pleasant to honest. I shouldn't have been laughing, but See, then, it was. Then, um... people, then people get upset when when I hear stories of soldiers putting, uh, giving people uh, pee inside of oh. a bottle and stuff like that. Like, I hear yeah. stories like that. And I'm like, ah. It's like, well. I don't know how to think <laughs> about that. Well. <laughs> I love the beginning. I love the start of your show, guys. I love that. I love. I love that music. Which um, was it? Tarantino uses all that. That like oh, American yeah. cinema. I suppose that, we didn't have that over here in England, but it just gets the nostalgia going. It's so. Oh, I love it. I love all that old. It's like shot on sixteen millimeter. Is it? Is it all? Yeah, I, I think it was. It's a, the. I think That's Leo put that together. Yeah, didn't we you? put that together. Yeah. Yeah, I love. Yeah, all, I just love the beginning to to. Um, Oh, it's just awesome. Just yeah, it was a uh, um a grunge uh style that I went with. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love it, it yeah. feels like a drive. I don't know if they had them in England, but it feels like a drive-in when you play yep. that. Yep, exactly. Yeah. That's that's what I was going for when I put it together. Yeah, no, he Leo did an amazing job. But let's oh yeah, to, yeah. Uh, let's. I, I yeah. know you guys are talking military and stuff like that, but let's talk a little bit about. The, I mean, you've won a ton of awards recently for the penitent. Oh, thank you. You know, and of course we had. Uh, oh, we lost. Uh, who'd we lose Jeff. again? Jeff again. Uh, Jeff, yeah. And as soon as he pops back, I'm gonna pop off. That's fine. Uh, well, you, yeah, you can pop off. Uh, okay. I can, I can run this stuff. Uh, switchboard is not running. I just shut it down. Okay. So I don't know if you want to jump in there and see what happened, but I don't know what happened. But anyways. Okay, I'll um, take a look. Uh, it was, uh, it was a pleasure, sir. Oh, nice to meet you. I like your hat out there, uh, Leo. I like oh, your hat. Thank you. Oh, thank would you... you. <laughs> My brother had that one Christmas years ago, back in the 80s. And I had oh, the Millennium yeah. Falcon. Oh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I remember nice. that. Yeah. <laughs> Nice to be, nice to see you, Leo. Thanks for putting this together. Oh, same here. Thank Thanks you. for jumping in, Leo. I appreciate it. Well, and uh, to all our live viewers, yeah, you're going to listen to us say goodbye to Leo. Fucking bye relax. Bye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, crap. No, I don't like that view. There we no. go. Okay. So, Webster, what year did you uh, enlist and what did you uh, enlist as? Or do you guys have like an open contract thing like the Marine Corps does? Um, I, I joined in 1995. Um, I was I went to art school first uh, after school, mm-hmm. um, and then I didn't quite fit into art school in that mold because I was a bit a, a bit of an aggressive person, and I needed to sort of channel my violence into. I was working in a local superstore, beating up shoplifters, and that wasn't going down too well. So they said you'd be better off going mm-hmm. in the military, where they could channel that sort of aggressive behaviour. And then, like in the I military, they just give you awards. Yeah. They would give yeah. you, 
they would give you promotions and and <laughs> treats for the more psychopathic you became. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. true. No, it's the true. That, it just yeah, they would just yeah use you for more violent jobs, and, and that's how that's how I sort of progressed in the military. And what I found was the because I wasn't the most intelligent person, I could physically get myself to where I needed to be in the military. So the more fit you became, and I used my fitness as a tool to. I wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed, but you know, get, <laughs> to get my rank, to get my rank, and and to sort of, um, I just, I just loved, I loved the the life, just traveling around the world and causing trouble and the structure <laughs> is is important yes. too. That's one of the things that I love about it is there's a structure, and everybody yeah. tries within reason to to follow the structure. But in the American military, like in the army. There's a rule for everything. There's a regulation yeah. how to tie your boots and how to wear you. Yes. Like literally. No, it's literally it's literally written down mm -hmm. somewhere for everything that is done. Yeah. That's one of the things I, I used to I miss a lot about about it. And the camaraderie. It, it was the, it was the, the someone rung me the other day and they were asking they're writing a book about film producing and they asked me as a director and a writer and a director um because I wrote and directed Penitent. They said, you know, how did you put together Penitent and the reason I put it together in the way I did was using everything I was taught in the military to um, to um, organize people and to be the leader of that. And, and the leadership skills that I learned in it was so when I said I was going to make the film to keep that vision for seven years, because when you're making a film with no budget and no money and telling everyone, yeah, we're going to make this and it's going to it's going to work. Mm -hmm. And you got people coming in, people leaving, people not believing in your vision, people trying to actually destroy your vision, which is one of the hardest things, and then not becoming violent towards them because they <laughs> because they're about to destroy your dream. You know, it was it was literally emotion to make penitent was an emotional roller coaster in itself. You didn't had... beat them up, really? <laughs> no, 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 but there was times that it was people I could have, yeah, neck okay. stretched them and pulled their head off but i didn't yeah uh, it just it just seems like out of character for you not to beat somebody up that's all <laughs> <laughs> i think that's been the hardest journey is to is to, to, to transfer because I've, I've also been a therapist for 12 years and I had to do a lot of therapy on myself and learn about looking inward and that was also part of the journey was to look inward mm -hmm. and because i was diagnosed with ptsd in 2007 oh, realized I, and i and i realized that i had serious problems that that going through the film, making the film was a cathartic process for me. Dealing with oh, all these situations okay. and deal, managing people without using violence and to use negotiations and to also reflect inside and realize that 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 was part of the journey, you know. And actually, yeah. also, that what came out of the end of making Penitent was a team of of um, of artists that helped me finish the film which right. I can now go forward with and use the same team again because we all are, and work and collaborating because, you know, as a director, all I see yourself as you are literally, you are the, the conductor of a, a very, you know, of an orchestra. And if you've got a good orchestra, yeah. then you can conduct that to get the, the perfect music at the end and also letting go of your own ego. Cause I might have a vision of how I want to make this film, but the editor's going to have his vision. The 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 sound designer's going to have his vision. The mm. cinematographer's definitely going to have his own vision. And then allowing them to have the creative freedom to to finish what we've got, which is penitent. And I'm, I'm really proud of it. You know. Yeah. Well, it's good that you went through therapy. I'm still in the drinking part of therapy. So. Yeah. Webster, yeah. do you think that one of the things that the movie also helped with is like giving you a purpose? Because that's one of the things that we see a lot of soldiers. Definitely. When they come back is like, they don't, you know, you wake up every day and like everything is laid out. Mm -hmm. Like you do PT, you do this, you do this. And when you get out, you feel like the, the film has helped like put like a, a mission back uh, on you. It's, um, it, it's definitely, um, it, it gave me a creative vent because I find if I, I do manual labor work and also I work as a therapist part time as well. So I do like manual labor work. I'm basically a jack of all trades, a master of none. <laughs> 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 I just do everything I got to do to, to, you know, to, to hustle. You're just a hustler, you know, just, just got to keep the pennies coming in and pay the mortgage and, and mm -hmm. but that the, the making the films, that's my artwork, you know, that's, 
I don't know how I'm going to be in the future if I'm dealing with big budgets and then all of a sudden I've got to answer to someone or answer to a boss and that's the thing I've got to work out next is where do I go next? If we're working with huge amounts of money, <clears throat> does the fun come out of it? Does you know? Because I've not done it for I've only ever made two films now with no money and both of them have been painful. Penitent on the last two years was fun, but the films in the past have been absolute hell to make you know because you're just dealing a lot with lots of egos and lots of different um politics and also if you've got no money to pay anybody and you're trying to convince people to come along for the ride the, the great thing about what happened last year was when we was winning all these awards like people like jordan the editor jordan cottingham mm -hmm. You know, he's a young art student, and all of a sudden now he's he's won a Cannes World Film Festival for best best uh, editor, or Lee Groves, who's been working in the music industry for years with with David Bowie and um, Janet Jackson and all these uh, like big artists, and all of a sudden takes a punt with us amateurs on this film, and he creates this amazing music score because he wanted to to basically learn about making music scores for films, so he practiced. His, his craft on our film and now we've got this stunning amazing music score done by like one of the greatest produced music producers in the world right so we, so we got lee groves on board who's <clears throat> but he said working with us was was just as much fun as working with some of the greats you know because he had that creative freedom because we didn't know what we were doing <laughs> <laughs> well but, that's the but fun he, part but lee was so, between me lee and jordan at one point we would like go out shoot some stuff and then this guy called kyle um we had um carl richardson came in he was the cinematographer who took over from john o'regan john o'regan was like uh he was you know he teaches cinematography at the university and he was amazing but his shoulder gave way and it was suddenly didn't have a cinematographer carl came in and between what we were shooting and then what Jordan was editing and then we would send it to America where Lee Groves was editing it in Boston and then he would send it back to us and we were like crafting the film and it was just such a beautiful process I was like oh god if it could just stay like this we'll go out shoot the stuff come back Jordan edits it then we send it to Lee Lee puts the, the score on it and in the end it was like it was just that was the most joyous part of making Penitent was putting it together and do you know what none of them said no they just got on with it but at the beginning, you get all these people that they want to sort of get in on your film, but they just want the IMDb credit, mm -hmm. which is sad, really, you know. And then, right. and then they start self sabotaging it. And like the guy that I was working with at the beginning deleted three days of the footage on a hard drive because he said, "I'm running out of hard drive space, so you're going to produce me a new hard drive in the next two days," which I didn't have the money to buy, um, or I'm going to start deleting footage, and I. I had to go out fishing and get the money, <laughs> the money and quickly bought the, and which we went around to his house and pleaded with him, please don't delete any more footage. I've got an editor. You don't need to delete it. And um, how I didn't kick the shit out of him, I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what the question I had. It's like it, honestly, yeah. So I've never said it on her, but an absolute grade A asshole to work with, and I, I hope I never <laughs> see him again. So it drove me mad. <laughs> to delete footage, I think is sacrilege. When all those actors have turned oh, yeah. up, right, and, and they're working for nothing. See, then right? people, like, I won't name the guy, but flipping hell, man, I was. <laughs> fucking... they, wonder, they wonder why. Pissed me right know. off. Pissed me right off. Wow. I mean, anyone who does that is it, that's criminal negligence, and you should you should get the death penalty. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, I agree. I agree. Why? Why do I'm that? Like, what? What a dick. What an absolute dick. Yeah, that is a dick. Some people just like being a dick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to delete this footage. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. That's really good idea, isn't it? <laughs> Do you say it just like I, that? You know what? Dude, I feel like this is therapy now. I've got that off my chest. I've said it to the world. Cock. With a you, you, capital listen, you C. Better composed than I am. If someone said that to me, I'd be like, all right, man, I guess I got to blow up your house. All right. It's like, hey, Rico, your <laughs> mic is wicked <laughs> low. Oh yeah, bro, I, the, the pettiness in Richard is what's up, bro. <laughs> but anyway, now on a, on a peaceful note, I've done a lot of therapy and I forgive. I've forgiven him. Um, I've forgiven. Him. Um, so, um. What, sir, what is what is the the long term goal with the movie? Are are you trying to get it into 
Well, I'll like, tell you what, Ma- America yeah. have been have been the only people that uh, in Bayview uh, Entertainment took our film on because obviously the starting of the, the war in Ukraine hasn't been the best for wanting people wanting to make war films around the Eastern Bloc. So right. it was like, uh, we uh, couldn't have hit it at the more wrong time. Every film I bring out is always at the wrong time. It's like, yeah, no one's going to be interested in watching something that's about the Eastern Bloc going, breaking up the past. And I didn't want to kick the Bosnia war off again. So, um, yeah, what happened was basically Bayview Entertainment in America went, we'll take your film. And I was like, um, looked at looked at some of the films. That, and one of my friends has got a film out with them. Um, Dave Reynolds, bless him, he passed away. They brought, they brought a film out called Louisa, which is about, it's an animation about uh, a lifeboat uh, rescue that happened hundreds of years ago in, in England. And it's oh. a beautiful film. It's a beautiful film. Um, in fact, I'll just have a look if it's in my cupboard. I'll just get the DVD out and uh, show you it. So in case there's someone out there that wants to buy it, because Dave passed away recently of cancer, and he he, he oh, put oh. a bit. bit of, it's called Louisa. It's on Amazon Prime. I should be plugging me okay. in. Okay. Yeah. But it's mm-hmm. a beautiful animation. It's it's you know it's 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 not got a massive budget. It's not the best cover, but. For a Christmas film, it's like a Christmas film as well, and it's got a beautiful score on it. Um, have, you, have you ever seen The Snowman, the British uh, Raymond Briggs, The Snowman? If you've got if you've got children, it's definitely worth watching it with some chi- like with your kids right. at Christmas. It's called okay, Louise. It's that on Amazon sounds Prime. better. That sounds better than uh, that Snowman movie with uh, Michael Keaton because that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> My, my daughter wanted to watch that the other day. He went from Batman to Snowman. It was horrible. It was horrible. Oh, I got to give my friend. Uh, I got to give my friend uh, um, Dean Kevin a shout out. I've been working him on the with the uh, doing the oysters at the moment. And Martin Lady and uh, we've been uh, getting the oysters in for um, for Christmas time because we sell them to France and France go mad for the oysters and the snails and all that lot. So we're we're doing that at the moment. We're getting up at six o'clock, going in, and wow, I have got to go in the water tomorrow. I got to go up to go up to my go up to my nipples <laughs> and pull bags of mussels out of the sea. I've just got my wetsuit out for it tomorrow. But this is the life. This is the Hollywood lifestyle. See that everyone sort of. <laughs> How hard is it to catch snails? You just pick them off the off the. That's off what the I rock. thought. Like. <laughs> Snails. How hard is it to hunt a snail? That just... they are fast. They're fast. They just... <laughs> you should say, "I'm going to pick up snails." Hunting is a whole different thing. Foraging, foraging. <laughs> uh, so you haven't you haven't seen Penitent yet? None of you have seen it. I thought you would have seen it. No, no. Um, I, I actually said this to Jeff earlier. I said I was flipping through, you know, Amazon Prime. Yeah, uh, and I was like, "Oh, here's Penitent, here's Diary of a Disgraced Soldier." I said, "I got to watch these before the show Wednesday." And then I clicked over and I went, "Oh shit, I got to finish watching this series I'm watching." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and, and, and all of a sudden it's fucking Wednesday, and I'm like, "Oh shit, I forgot to watch." What the a movies. dick move! Oh my god! god That's... Hey, Re- uh, hey Rico, your mic's wicked low. I can't hear you. I can hear him. Oh, my bad. My bad about that. You, you muted your what mic? I did. I was muting my mic because I went to get yeah. I'm cold. Oh. <laughs> so let's we'll go. Missouri, we'll treat you right. But so for all our viewers, real quick, for all our viewers, if you do want to check out Penitent or just Diary of a Disgraced uh, Soldier or anything that this amazing gentleman has done, it's in the show notes up above or down below, depending oh, on where you're watching you. or listening to us from. Usually Leo does that. And I forgot he wasn't here, so... Now back to I've the got, show. I've got a book. I've got a book called Soldier of Consequence as well. So there's free products on Amazon Prime. Soldier of Co- so- Soldier of Consequence, which is right. about what happened to me with getting arrested and being a world news story at one point with uh, filming that incident. That well, now around. see what's the shipping from the UK to the US? Because see, I oh. buy the book, but I have to have it autographed. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't buy it unless it's autographed because then it goes that's, on the that's, a, that's a good point right there. That that's a good point good, right there, yes, Ben. I, I have the same question actually. What if what? I what if I just I post out some stickers to you? I'll put some put some put some signatures on these stickers. 
You stick it on your book. That, <laughs> you could actually like do that. that. You could actually like could do that. I have Everybody seen that. The Army like well, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what I wanted to do. Once you've, once you've seen Penitent, I've got this was left over from when we were doing oh. our promotion. This, this, oh. uh, the artwork is amazing. This, um, it is amazing. This was done by a local artist in England. And, um, <laughs> yeah, what I want to do is try and get all this, get, get steve to sign it steve kelly i want to see if steve will come on your podcast because he does a, when you've watched the film you'll see that he does an amazing job yeah steve kelly julian cigar obviously you've met him he's an animal in it an absolute yeah. animal jason girders uh dave trout and uh des edwards and all of the, i'll try and get signatures from um, ali harrison get them to cool. sign it and then if we could send it over to yeah. you guys nice. and then you could perhaps put it up as a i don't know i've Put it up as I'm a. I'm gonna have to get Amazon Prime now. I have put it. it. Put it up Do as you? a dartboard. Okay. Is that what he said? Put it. <laughs> 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 Dude, I'm no, glad you guys you wanna... not watching right now. <laughs> the what? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, Jules, Jules, Jules is a unit. You've seen you, when you see the film. We see what he does to me in it. You'll be. Uh... <laughs> he, he done yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I gotta. I gotta ask. You were you were a soldier for for a little while. What was what was one of the things that you enjoyed the most out of being a soldier? I think the, the the best, the most proudest I was was when I trained recruits. I went back to where I was trained, and I got to train um, for um, for for twelve weeks recruits to become soldiers. So, like taking them from civilians to you know, it was like proper. It was my my um, full metal jacket moment, you know. Like I was listening <laughs> to that. So you tactically and, subdued a lot of people to the ground with the minimum amount of force necessary. Oh, no, no. To understand. I, well, I said to them, I said, guys, you can either have Winchester's training and ATR Winchester, it was called, where we trained. Um, I, I can't remember what ATR stands for now. I've lost my military. But ATR Winchester is where we trained them. And I said, you can either have ATR Winchester's recruit training or you can have my training for your final exercise and they said we, we're going to afghanistan we want your training so we put them through interrogation we, we completely threw the rule book out and um mm. we just yeah. we we took them we took them to another level you know we had to take them to war because these people if they don't they're gonna and and, and gratefully all of them come back alive and their friends are me now on facebook and there's a there's a picture i'll try and find it of me with my recruits and we've got this evil stare, like sending them to war. And we had this photograph taken, and yeah, it was it was um, it was a good moment, you know. That was one of my proudest moments. That's really that's really cool that you say that yeah. because like I I went to <laughs> you'll, you'll get a chuckle out of this. I went to I went to Iraq like straight out of basic training. Yeah, and like I didn't have that pre deployment training, and like I realize now, <clears throat> looking back after running missions with these guys and stuff, that it's so important. Because, like, if I can't trust you to take a hit or to, like, yeah. really, like, lose your shit when we need to, like, I can't trust you in a combat zone. So, like, that pre-deployment yeah. training, man, is you bond a lot, too. Yeah, the Afghanis don't have that same rule book. I don't know if you nah, noticed that over there. The bad guys don't. Let's yeah. say the bad guys. Yeah, the yeah. bad guys. Have the the bad guys. The bad guys, bro. Just, you know? Right, right. No, that's that's really cool. That's 12 weeks, man. That's, that's awesome. So, I, I do have a question, though. So... You had mentioned earlier in the show that you had PTSD, and I know I saw somewhere that um, you're actually a trainer. Wow, we just lost Jeff again. He's having serious. Uh, he's serious, got pause. He's got. <laughs> he's got some serious uh, weather going on it in his area right now, so it keeps knocking out his internet. Oh, um, yeah. But you actually work with veterans suffering now. Is that correct? I have done, yeah, and I—I I mean, I, I would still say I'm recovering, With recovering through PT. I'm still going through the journey. I—I I, I thought right. at one point I'd completely mastered it, but during COVID and the mask wearing bullshit and all the the nonsense that went with mm -hmm. COVID restrictions just wound me up, and I lost a lot of money in my businesses, and I was seriously angry at the government, and and it it it, it ignited stuff in me that I'd thought that I'd buried, and and mm -hmm. you know I still work through those my that my aggressive anger towards what i see as a dystopian cloud that came over not just england but the whole world you know mm -hmm. and as a soldier and my, my grandfather being a soldier as well we we fought as your 
as your forefathers fought for in our country, we'd be speaking fucking German without you guys, you know? Right. Um, and we, we fought for for people, civilians, to have the rights to freedom of speech. And I've seen my, my son's generation have two or three years stripped away from them. You know, people call them okay. snowflakes and that, but... Man, when I was 18, 19, I could go. I could go to France. I could go to Europe. I could go. I could travel anywhere I wanted. I wasn't restricted. Mm-hmm. Right. I yeah. Could, I could do anything. I could do anything mm-hmm. I wanted. And now, all of a sudden, my generation are saying to, to the younger generation, "You can't have what we've had." And I'm mm. like, "Fuck you, man! This is what I fought for. This is yeah. I I fought for people to have freedom of choice. And what I'm seeing is more the choices are being taken away. More the freedoms are being taken away. And that fucking pisses me off." You know, right. that, yeah. that ignites my PTSD more than anything. Because we have, a, me, we have a, a friend that kind of described what you're saying with the best phrase that I've, I've ever heard. And he's like, I heard this from a movie. And he, he told me, he's like, people don't understand that a lot of us went to war for less than $50,000 a year. <laughs> Look at all the wild shit that we did. 15, one five thousand yeah. dollars a year. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh. What the- a private, a private soldier is on is on about in England is on about it might have gone up now <laughs> it might be but, it but might wait, be but didn't you get hazardous pay you got hazardous pay no no mate no, no chance. what <laughs> uh, I think Rico froze no <laughs> yeah. I thought he that's, un- that's unbelievable, unbelievable. <gasps> I, I thought I, I never. I thought I thought never I misheard you. I was like, oh, again. my God. I will this- never bitch about my deployment again, bro. Oh, my God. But right, to tell right. you this, my friend says, you know, we went to war for, you know, $50,000, less than 50000 a year. <laughs> and we did some gangster shit. The fuck you think we're going to do for the people that we really love? Yeah. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Good point. That's, yeah. that's what people don't 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 get about. Um, the sleeping. About- the, the sleeping the, yeah there's a sleeping giant and and i and yeah. i think it i think the more they withdraw freedoms the more they withdraw stuff away like we saw what happened in canada you know with like they that fucking justin trudeau that cop oh, sucker, yeah. you know what he done to his country yeah. and and that just that dickhead in 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 new zealand jacinda or whatever fucking name is the skinny fucking i know you're talking about ske- yeah. skeleton head you know what they what these people are doing is disgusting and us veterans are sitting back watching and going you're behaving no different than Saddam Hussein. In fact, Saddam Hussein wasn't that bad. I spoke to people in, in Iraq and they said he, he wasn't that bad. He left us alone. Like the people in the Maizan province, the tribes. I spoke to people. I said, what did you think yeah. of Saddam? He said, well, to be honest, he just left us alone. We just, you know, obviously roasted people alive and done some crazy ass shit. <clears throat> but, we were in, I mean, uh, in we, Baghdad. We, we, yeah, let me just tell you, can I just tell this story quickly? There was a, yeah. there was a mm-hmm. war memorial in, 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 in Basra it, they went back like to the first world war um and and saddam had it moved because they were going to build on this area he had it moved brick by brick so if he was that disrespecting of of he would have just demolished it wouldn't he so right. well yeah. Had some, yeah, had some moral, he had some morals i'm not saying saddam was a great guy but the thing is we're told so much fucking bullshit oh yeah so much bullshit yeah well, sorry, see, you, sorry, he... sorry Eric, i interrupted you sorry no, no, the U.S. actually put him in charge, believe it or not. <laughs> and the reason they put him in charge is yeah, because he could keep th- keep a lid on things. Not because he was a great guy. No. He kept order. That was it. He murdered people. Well, he did murder people. I didn't say he was a great guy. I said he kept order. There's a difference. Okay. Yeah, well, we, we, we found we found. We found the mass graves of, of him he buried, you know, Q80 people on the, you know, buried them alive. You know, he done done some fucked up shit. But, oh yeah, you know, we've got we've got politicians in this country that 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 use medazolam, uh, which is an end of life drug, to kill off all the old people, the greatest generation that lived. They killed them off and didn't let them see their families from their. I don't know if it happened in, in the states in the same way, but mm. I know people that couldn't go and see their 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 relatives. You know. Mm. W- how dare they do that? How dare these scumbag they generation? They you should come to Missouri Canada. Webster. Yeah, they do that in Canada, believe should, it or not. You should come to Missouri Webster. I think I think you would I think you would like Missouri Webster. Why you got it. some people there you want them to beat up? 
No, yes. no, I don't. Yes. Retired. Yes. No, I retired. I think I retired. He would be I'd like, probably get beat up. No, dude, no. Listen, dude, I'm telling you, if you're ever in the U.S., come to Missouri. You're, you're not, you're not going to want to leave, I'll tell you that. I'll no, but uh, believe it or not, this is true. Up in Canada, they're actually offering vets end-of-life service. Oh, with terminal, with terminal, if they have, like, terminal no, just, diseases and stuff. no. Post traumatic stress disorder, and they're like, "Oh, do you want to? Do you want to end it? All right, because we'll help. We'll Damn. help. Damn. It's it's a, yeah, it doesn't even have to be a doctor. It can be a nurse. <laughs> it saves them money on pensions. That's why. That's what they don't yeah. want to pay out for these people. <laughs> I'm not. I don't doubt it. Damn. Webster with the with the. It's turning into a conspiracy show, Bay Ben. This is turning into a. It was on the news. That's not, that's a, conspiracy. not a conspiracy show. It was on the yeah, news. That's, that's why I. That's why I just loot a joint. Over <laughs> <laughs> for this, bro. I'm sober. What are you doing? Hey, man. Like to hey, all Craig, our viewers, like I said, Craig you talks. never know where our show is going to go. We were you know here what? To talk about Penn and Webster and. I'll, take, I'll go gentleness. deep down that rabbit hole. I'll go deep down that rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be up there. Oh, gonna, gonna there. Alex Jones, mate. This is going to be the... Oh, God. <laughs> we're going to get a visit by the men in black. I've got the papers. I've got the documentation. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will say this, though. It sounds to me like Martin is going to appear on the Rico podcast in sometime in the near future <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I'll, I'll be on it i'll be on it i love i love a conspiracy you now and then just keep shit keeps Dude, you it, want the yeah, three of, you want him and just the two of us on a show oh it's you well, yeah i mean you don't need me there to sit look pretty and smoke weed bro it would, <laughs> it would be wild it would be right? it would be wild it, <clears throat> just the three of us talking about veteran stuff it would yeah. get well that's pretty would, much what we've done tonight so that's sorry, true. Guys. That's yeah. true, sorry, guys. It was, it's, 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 and you, it's all you, good. You, no, no, no. It's, it's great. Questions. I love. Oh, no, love... sir, this is dope. <laughs> no, no, this is great. You know, um, this is awesome. Nah, that's why it's, people it's... watch our show because you you just don't know where that show is going to end up going. Yeah, we and do touch. You know... We do touch a little bit about what we say we're going to touch about, which would be your film career uh, as a producer, an actor, mm -hmm. um, the things that you've accomplished. But I'm just I'm just sitting here enjoying the conversation uh in in depth learning oh, more I'm, I'm, I'm glad oh. since, since it's your show i'm glad you're enjoying the conversation it's a uh, well fuck i mean you know <laughs> i think i got a couple questions in and jeff oh lost, yeah you did yeah jeff lost power so i don't even know if he's coming back leo, <laughs> leo had to go eat dinner Webster, I gotta, I gotta ask you, what's uh, what's next, man? Like, what's your next? So I know, I know that an idle ben, mind. Hey, that's hold on. Ben's question. No, hold that's on. Ben's question. I know, I know that an idle mind is a devil's playground because I know I'm a soldier through and through, man. So I know that if I, if I stay still, bro, I'll, I'll, I'll burn it's down a building. Good. It's not also, good. What next this is, this is my easel behind it because I'm an artist. I like paint. I do a lot of paintings and drawings and sketches first, and then that becomes my vi that becomes my vision board of what I'm trying to. And it's amazing when you're making a film how if I draw a picture, and literally next thing I know, I'm seeing the actors in front of me performing mm -hmm. exactly what I've come up with or doing a storyboard. I love that. That for me is like I don't know if you've heard of the secret, you know, the law of attraction and yeah. manifesting you know i've actually seen that happen with filmmaking it's just unbelievable like I've, I've had the vision in my head found the location i find the location first where i want to shoot it i start thinking about the actors i'm going to use i'm going to use jules am i going to use jim main am i going to use mm -hmm. like um steve uh kelly i think about the actors of what i know they can do um that they're, they're sort of and i try and i try and make i always i don't try and push the actors out of their comfort zone to be something that they're not i always want them to be an extension of herself. If you watch Penitent, I'm in Penitent. My missus said to me, well, that's just you. You just behave like all the time, losing your temper and flipping out all the time. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to be something I'm not. And I don't want an actor to do that. I want, I want to find, you know, if I'm going to cast somebody, I'll write the script around what the, what the person can do. You know, um, like Jules is amazing to work with because he, he's like me. He's got that dark, that dark side. And you can really tap into that with Jules. And, the best thing about Penitent was was creating the villains. You know, when I watch, you know, when you watch Robocop and that scene where Peter Weller gets captured by the bad guys, Clarence Bodekin, yeah. and they shoot him up, and you you just you just hi Jeff, thanks for joining in. Um, 
you just feel scared for for Peter Weller, the character of what's he? You know, uh, Murphy when he's about to get shot. I don't know if you when I watched that when I was a kid watching that in the eighties, I remember shitting mm-hmm. myself when they blew his hand off and. So I wanted to create oh, yeah. a scene at the beginning of Penitent that sort of made you, you know, you're drawn into these soldiers and then all of a sudden this bad thing happens and the villains are so scary that they become almost like demonic, demonic yeah. uh, and, and, and Jules just pulls that off massively. It's him, <laughs> him and Des. And Dave, Dave Trout is next. He's an ex police officer. He was an ex um, arm response police officer. So like the way he's moving with his weapon, this guy's done it for real. I want people that have done this shit for real. I don't like using people who don't know what they're doing. So there's a couple of soldiers that are in penitent that I served with, like Liam Davies. I was in the army with him. He did 15 years, did three tours of Iraq. Um, oh wow! Uh, the the, the one of the guys that's doing the intelligence brief, he sounds like a farmer with his with his accent, and he's a plumber. He's a plumber now, but he'd been to Bosnia, so everything he's describing in the film is 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 from. I said just just give an intelligence brief to do some officers, and I'll, I'll, I'll film it, and that's all we did. He said, right, guys, tomorrow you're going in. This is this group's going to be out here. You're going to be doing this task alpha, task bravo, task Charlie, and we just did it all exactly how it would have been in the military. Um, so, nice. so I like that. I like that. When you right. watch the film, and also the gunfire, we used real gunfire. So we took the sound engineer, uh, the sound recordist, and uh, my friend is still in the army, and they were going to go down to shoot the shooting range in Cornwall. So I said, "Oh, we'd be able to get us in." So they they let us come in, and we we got in with the with the sound equipment and went into the butts. So I don't know if you did that when you was in the army, gone down in the in the in the trenches, oh, yeah, and they yeah. fired, fired, fired over yeah, your head. over you. With a yeah. Guy. yeah, with a fifty guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, yeah. But, so yeah, but you it's didn't know Alec Baldwin was in the movie. Who? <laughs> you didn't know who was in the movie? Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. You're talking about using live weapons, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It'll be doing Not a no lot. Part of him. I mean, he's kind of famous. Yeah. So. Yeah, Alex. Alex <laughs> is probably he's going to be doing a long sentence, isn't he? Bless him. <laughs> He loves live fire action. He does. He yeah, just... But that didn't he get some? He got some stupid idiot woman who didn't have a clue about weapons to to teach them. She was yeah, doing all the firearms. Still, I'm not saying that women can't do that. I'm just saying. No, it's still it it's a woman still under who... investigation. I believe there was like, a lot of things, a lot of things that led up to that. that. Yeah. It wasn't just there's a one lot of thing. things that led up to it that that's been. But it's still under investigation, unfortunately. But it's not looking good. No, like, no. It's just... It's, I mean, you know, so to that, find out about our amazing guest, <laughs> <laughs> look in the he show notes that below. Down below. <laughs> oh. So Rico had asked what you had coming up in in works. So I read somewhere that you're working on a couple of things. One called Grail, yeah, and Was... another called We'll Meet Again. So tell us a little bit about maybe Grail. So so Grail. When I was making Penitent, just at the end of Penitent, when I'd finished all the war scenes, I, I literally, I was exhausted. And um, uh, I was, I went, um, I was, I, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and this just story came to me. When we was growing up as children in, in Cornwall, have you heard of Cornwall in England? Mm-hmm. Yes. Cor- Cornwall. Um, it's, it's quite a sort of Celtic mystic part. It's a bit like, you know, Gaelic connected with mm-hmm. Ireland and stuff like that. Yeah. But there's these, these old folklore tales that, that Jesus came to Cornwall, visited Cornwall. And that and sounds completely nuts, right? But there was this tale that Jesus came to Cornwall and there's all these stone crosses in Cornwall, like these stone mon- monoliths. And it, you go around Cornwall, they're everywhere. Every churchyard has one of these and they're two, they're 2000 years old. And mm-hmm. on it, is a is a celtic cross on one side and on the back is a is a little kid with his arms up like this and a little tunic and they reckon that that a child that the child of the uh, the child version of jesus because he was being pursued by herod he went mm-hmm. off with joseph of arimathea who was his uncle at the end of his execution and joseph of arimathea was a tradesman and 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 traded all over the world 
and it was well traveled and would come up through Gaul, which was France, and come up through the coast and travel across to Cornwall to trade for tin because tin mines are really significant with Cornwall. There's still tin today. That's... So, the... hi, Jeff. So, so the legend was that, that, that Jesus would come to Cornwall to trade for tin. Mm-hmm. And they would bring gold and spices and merchant stuff from from. And I thought this is amazing. How imagine if, what this would look like to see a, like an ancient vessel coming in, out of the mist, into Cornwall. Mm-hmm. Um, you can play the trailer while we're talking if you wanted. It just sort of show the the sort of um, the the scene that we shot. So I started to visualize what would that be if they met the pagan tribes of Cornwall, and I started to visualize it. And next thing you know, the story came to me. And I started writing it at three o'clock in the morning. And by the by the end of the morning, I had the sort of outline of Jesus comes to Cornwall, meets the descendant of Merlin, which was <laughs> so that's gonna be I wasn't smoking nothing as well when I was when I did this, right? This, this was just if I smoked joints, I'd be even I think I because my brain is mad enough, I don't need to take drugs, right? If I took drugs, I don't know what I'd be. I'd be I'd be locked up. It might calm you down. <laughs> no, I've done it, I've tried it. It didn't, it just don't it, for me. You just want to murder more. <laughs> no man, I, I've my, my brain is crazy enough. I need to just fresh air's enough for me. So I, I am, back, yeah. back to the Jesus story anyway. So, so then, anyway, Jesus <laughs> he meets Jesus, Merlin. Meets meets a descendant of Merlin. Not saying that because it because there's different timelines yeah. there. Mm-hmm. The King Arthur and all that lot. And then um there's this whole war going on within with these Celtic tribes. And he's basically it's not the story isn't about it's about these tribes meeting this this mystic man, whether he's Jesus or not, that leaves for the for the viewer to decide. And that Jesus is just like, he's just on job, what do they call it? Um, job training. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, okay. Well, on the job training. Yeah. He's, yeah. No, he's just on the boat. He's gone with his, with his, with his uncle, Joseph. He's getting some work experience around the world, you know, and he, and, and he's, but how did Christianity get into England for a start? Because it's bloody miles away, isn't it? The difference yeah, geographically. True. So, so I was wondering, perhaps this is, and there's a, have you heard of William Blake? The yes. work of William Blake, and he did the. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of the song Jerusalem? Mm-hmm. There's a song in England it's called Jerusalem. It it, 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 it's very yeah. The song Jerusalem says, "And did those feet in ancient times walk upon green pastures, uh, pastures green, or something like that?" So that he was mentioning he was a coded message. Did Jesus come to England? And those satanic mills, which is a reference to the tin mines, the Mount Cornwall. And a mm-hmm. lot of miners went to. Oh, we got an oh, issue there. I, I think he froze up. Oh, yeah. froze up. Yeah. No, he's yeah. coming to us from across the pond. So that's true. Yeah, no, it's been great. Yeah, yeah. I'm, sit, I'm sitting in the dark. Still the talking, you just can't hear. I anymore. see that. Or maybe he's actually. <laughs> Jeff actually lost. Jeff, like you lose power, power and everything. Yeah, I lost power and everything. I'm on my phone. I got a lamp. CIA no, shut us down. The web. Oh, he's C- back. C- CIA shut us down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a three-letter agency listening to this and and wiretapping it, <coughs> it's, just, it's all jokes. Right. Well, I, joke. I was I was I was hacked by the News of the World for for six seven months. Uh, have you heard of the, the newspaper News of the World years ago? Yes, mm. absolutely. So uh, my my name came up on the same list as Hugh Grant's. Charlotte Church, uh, I probably don't know who she is, uh, Ryan Giggs, just a load of English sort of celebrities. I wasn't a celebrity, wow. I was just a soldier, but because I was being spied on by a guy called Glenn Melcare, who was outside my house spying on me when I was training recruits at ATR Winchester, funny enough. Wow. And my name, my name came up in his diary. So the Metropolitan Police connect, contacted me in 2011 and said, oh, you're, you're, you've been hacked by the news of the world your phone would you like a payout oh, of course i would thank you very much so i had a letter <laughs> yeah of course I would. the government I fucked me enough yeah but... so they gave me some money to keep quiet about it and i've just told him told... <laughs> <laughs> well you, you know I uh, hypothetical. <laughs> Webster, this is all hypothetical bro this is all hypothetical we've all been drinking you know hey <laughs> Hey, I know what it's like getting hacked by those three-letter agencies because uh, they started playing Spanish commercials on HBO, and I don't speak Spanish. So, 
<laughs> oh no, it's true. He texted me, Webster. He texted me one day. He's like, these motherfuckers know that I hang out with a Puerto Rican because everything is like, oh, I call myself Espanol. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, it's weather, a, it's weather. like a regular Home Depot commercial, but it's in Spanish. I'm like, <laughs> you guys are supposed to be outside the store, not in the, you know? What the hell? Oh, God. Holy shit. Oh, no. <laughs> Is there a, uh, <laughs> I speak a little bit of Spanish. Just but, a little sir. bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> manana, manana, manana. Do you know, manana. Tomorrow, tomorrow. We did it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. This got out of hand, Ben. This got out of hand. It's but HBO's fault. It. It's HBO. No, oh, Jeff had nothing to do with I running this one off the it. tracks. No. no, the only three-letter <laughs> thing I know is GFY. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great saying. I love that one. <laughs> oh god dude oh, no, it's been, i mean it, it, this has been great i mean we've learned a lot i think <laughs> learned some spanish anyway uh, big uh, shout out to ben Rowe, <laughs> our, our producer it gets us ben just coming on the chat there ben row ah, ah. there you go All right. i already well, like him he's got a great yeah he's got a great <laughs> we gotta we gotta get more people from britain watching your podcasts absolutely yeah, yeah we, we have, have i mean fun. We've no, I will had, do. Uh, I will share out as much as I can, guys. You know, you, you, you... I think you're the fifth, the fifth guest to join us from the UK. I mean, Jules, Jules joined us from the US, but he originally is from the UK. Yeah, well, he's coming back. Yeah, he's getting picked yeah, up. Yeah, he's, by he's, he's actually tomorrow. He's, he's in Boston right now. He's, he? he's about forty minutes from me right now. He's in Boston oh, at, the, okay. at the airport. Up in there, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's well, got a six-hour want... layover. He wanted me to pick him up from the airport, but we're doing oysters tomorrow and Friday are our busiest days. We're on doing the oysters. Ooh, so, yeah. You drinking? You having a few a few brews? They cut. They cut your hands up big time. These things. Oh, really? They do? Really? How yeah. like uh, the the oysters? The, Europe, the edges of razors, absolute razors. Bro, you gotta, go, you gotta go to Puerto Rico and have oysters in Puerto Rico. You can wear gloves. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you can get them for like. Well, now, it used to be like a quarter when I was growing up. You get a quarter and you get oysters. It's like seventy five cents each. But dude, that smooth, my man, smooth. Never knew oysters could have sharp edge. You remember? You've lived yeah. in Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they were fifty wild. cents. I thought it's like no, swallowing like... a freaking snot. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's good for you. Yeah, good for you, bro. It's good for I, you. I, I got invited out to America if you because uh, I did the work with the veterans and I made the film Diary of a Disgraced Soldier. Uh, there's a uh, father uh, Phil Salwar who's um, he's a, a Vietnam veteran who contacted me, watched my film, and he said, "Would, would I come out to the states in 2011? Uh, went out to um, went out to Florida, uh, and we uh, they did the international vet, uh, conference of war veteran ministers. So they like Vietnam veterans." That, that suffered with post-traumatic cholesterol became ministers. I mean, this is a film in itself, right? Wow, that is a um, film. I can get some of these guys on your on your podcast. They'd love to come on. Um, and I mean, Phil Salwar was amazing. And then he introduced me to Alan Cutter. Now, Alan Cutter wrote the book um, "The Altar of War." In fact, I think I've got a copy up here. I don't know if it, but um, if he's he is an American treasure. Well, they both are. This. Yeah, this book here called The Altar of War. And you've you've the all seen ap- okay. you've seen you've seen Apocalypse now. Yeah. This yes. guy yes. this guy is the real deal. He worked on the Phoenix program. And um I've oh. got video I've got video footage of him talking about um his experiences. So he was wow. hired by the CIA because he could speak Vietnamese and they, they brought him out to um um Vietnam. Uh he's something like nineteen years of age. He, he fell in love with this girl. Uh, this Vietnam local girl, she got shot and killed. He then went over the edge, started drinking scotch every day, working with a death squad, going in at night. I mean, you know, basically, That'd a lot a of people, show. a lot oh, yeah. of people. Are you, are you people. talking yeah, about yeah, yeah, yeah. the Phoenix operation from the Phoenix from, program? From yeah, the, Alan's program. still alive. Um, Alan's still alive. Yeah, Alan's still alive. And he talks, you know, he, I've got one foot. So I went out to, I yeah. went out to America and met like Alan's telling his story in this circle. And I'm thinking, Oh this my is God. like the you real Kurt, this is ben this is the real Colonel Kurtz. This is the real Colonel yeah. Kurtz. Yeah. You know? do, you, do you guys know what this is, Ben and Jeff? Mm-hmm. You know, you know what yeah. it is. Read the, read the Nick- Alter of War. It's on Amazon Prime. Yeah. I think it's it's, it's this so guy, for the people listening. It's basically um, 
it was a, a three letter agency operation that mm -hmm. was was done to pretty much pick up the Viet Cong, but it was like some real clan. They, they some people say that that was like the beginning of like clandestine wet what people call wet work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I I don't know. I haven't read that, but I've read the. I've, I've read some of the unclassified stuff mm -hmm. and I, I did not know that gentleman was alive. That's, that's, that's some I real did. shit right if you, there. Oh, if yeah. you go onto the Chris full podcast, uh, my friend, Chris full, uh, he does a podcast in the UK. Be good to hook <laughs> you. I'd like to get him on your show because you could pull a lot of, uh, do a lot of crossover with his podcast. Cause he gets a lot of the English. Um, so I'll, mm -hmm. I'll link you up with Chris full and Chris full interviewed, um, interviewed, uh, Alan Carr. And I mean, he's a, He's a, he's a minister now, you know, he's, he's a r real beautiful soul, real nice guy, but you wouldn't cross him. Like, and I said to him once, I said, um, <laughs> I said to Alan, I went, Alan, how, how would you dispatch of people like when you was in the military? And he just, he came behind me and he just goes, he, he just ran his thumb across my throat and it was, his yeah. thumb was cold. And <laughs> this guy's done this shit, you know, he, he's, he just went just like this, like, you know, and I was like, whoa, you know, flipping out, man, this guy's, and, and he basically, in the end, I don't want to spoil too much of the story, but the team that he trained, this death squad, they were going out and they were murdering people every night. And he, he thought, how can I reduce the killing? So he started giving them more scotch every night, more alcohol, lacing them with booze. And um, that was reducing the killings. And then he was going on his R&R &R to uh, somewhere and... Before he went on R and I, he heard the Death Squad saying, "We need to get rid of Alan. We need to tie up the loose ends before the war ended." So Alan basically got on really drunk one night and then just tossed a load of grenades in and blew them up, killed them. And I uh, oh, know, oh, man, it's you, the story. Look, look it up. <laughs> look it up. It's, it's, it's wow. a film. It's a film that yeah, needs to be made. I wish. Film, there's oh, too yeah. many. There's too many films I want to make. That's the trouble. And I. I, I <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, <laughs> there's not enough time yeah, in my life. Tells stories, like that's a film. That's a film. Right. That's I, start, a film. I started. I started so. too late. I wish I. Uh, but then again, I wouldn't have this experience to. If, nah, if dude, I, you didn't start late, man. No, someone's no, gonna. No. Someone's now. Nah, don't say that. Don't ever fucking say that, my man. You no, no, but late. you know, like in my lifetime, there's so many films that I want. Like you say, what's next? I tried to make a Napoleon film about uh, a year ago. We were supposed to start about two weeks ago shooting this Napoleon film. And we just mm -hmm. couldn't get funding for it. And uh, me and like one of the actors fell out and uh, the costume department didn't want to I, get involved. I can play Napoleon. The... I'm like five feet tall. No, I'm not. I'm five seven. <laughs> I'm bigger than Napoleon. We, we got, I've seen me, bro. <laughs> I watched some of your trailers for your fit. Yeah, it's good. I, 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 what's that thing you're squishing that head? How did you squish that head on your trailer? <laughs> what's that made out of? <laughs> It was, uh, I believe that. that was a cantaloupe, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it was a cantaloupe that we that we had made up and put a, uh, a wig on and blood ran packs. And, yeah, we I ran it over. It. I love it. Fucking you know what? Put a wig on it? Yeah. Yeah. It had then to be a head. It had to look like a head. It reminded me of Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. Yeah. Me, you. Ooh, yeah. Man. You a horror guy, Webster? You like horror stuff? I I, I uh, I think there's too much of it coming out now, but I do like the old classic stuff. I love Evil Dead. I was going to put one. I agree. Yeah, Evil Dead. I agree. Yes. I agree with you. There's too yeah. much. Like you're trying to do horror Halloween now. Yeah, I well, still yeah. struggle. No, no, I still no. struggle watching The Exorcist. I find the older ones more scary. I think because they're yes. almost like like if I watch Exorcist or like The Omen and oh the, the original Omen. one that yeah. is a, the original that was one. A Have you seen uh, oh. The Orphan? Uh, the second part of it. I haven't watched a lot of modern ones. I just, they just don't too many, too much CGI. Go right now, dude, go right now, rent The Orphan, the first movie of The Orphan, and yeah, Ben's and those, and then the second one. It's a really fucked up movie. Yeah, I haven't is seen it? the second one. I saw the first one. You yeah. haven't seen the, it's on Paramount. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I haven't seen Paramount that. Paramount for free. It's yeah. on Paramount for free. Dude, it's a, it's, it, it takes a lot for me to look at a horror movie and go, oh, yeah, that's, that's really fucked up. That movie had me going, I don't know who to hate. <laughs> wow, right? I don't know good. who to hate more. That's a good movie. If that, yeah, did, for yeah. Richard to say, I don't know who the fuck to hate more. That's yeah, a movie you gotta check out, bro. Yeah, so we only got it. we only got about four minutes left. Um, <laughs> four? Well, yeah, we could sit here all night, but 
Oh, pr- oh. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Bro, if we boost it, we boost it up. Extra, to, do an extra oh, yeah. 20 minutes. Do an extra if we let minutes, it up with Mr. Booze, it'd be, uh, it'd be over. It's over. We got to get my food. power back so I can get fucking dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I lost power. Bro, just oh, it's cold over there. Never mind. I was gonna say, just go go burn some stuff out back. Yeah, it's a little cold outside. Oh, I gotta burn barrels. That'll warm me up. We yeah, had yeah. Uh, we had the film director Tony Palmer come to our showing the other night. Tony Palmer directed. Uh, he directed uh, with Frank Zappa's Two Hundred Motels. Have you seen that? No. Yeah, Frank Zappa's. You know, yeah, it's a bit crazy. Like, but, um, Zappa, you know, Frank but, Zappa is. I know Frank Zappa, oh, but I haven't seen okay. that movie. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's a hit with Tony Tony Palmer also worked with um, Richard Burton. He worked with um, uh, mm. Peter Sellers. Um, oh, nice! Uh, and and he was involved with the music on the on the Shining with Kubrick. He was if oh, you nice. watched if you watched Kubrick. Um, I mean, I'm a massive Kubrick fan. Like, I mean, um, if you watch a Life in Pictures. Uh, Tony Palmer was asked to direct it, so Tony Palmer interviewed Spielberg. Everyone, you know, to have Tony Palmer, he's the one that quoted about the film. It's a very considerable piece of work, and, impo- and most importantly, an interesting test uh, twist on the Bosnia War. Tony Palmer wrote that, and um, he nice. um, he came to our film night the other night because we did a fundraiser for uh, veterans with PTSD, um, mm-hmm. and we had. Me, Tony Palmer, and Jim Main, who's in the film Fisherman's Friends, and he's also in Penitent, and that was it. Oh, and uh, Felix Black, who's going to be someone we're working with in the future. So, literally, we made 20, 20 pounds for veterans with PTSD, which is, but it just goes to showing in, in England, people don't really give a shit about veterans, to be honest. It's, it's very mm. sad, but that's, that's, that's where we're at. It's everywhere, unfortunately. But, but we had Tony Palmer to ourselves, and we we had a chat with him, and he was telling us stories about Kubrick and things like that, and just you know, I mean, there's untold documentaries done on. I said to him, I said, so why did Kubrick get? He goes, oh, he just consulted me on the music for The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just yeah. And do you know, how I got to meet him. My dad fixes his swimming pool. My father fixes his swimming pool because he's got this house in Cornwall, beautiful oh, house. Wow. And my father fixes his swimming pool. He said, oh, my son makes films. And he went, oh, we'll get him to <laughs> drop a film. So my dad took it. I literally got his email address, fired the film off. It didn't have any music on it, and he loved it. So getting Tony wow. Palmer on board. And also, I need to shout out to Mark Ryan, bless him. Mark Ryan's been uh, Mark Ryan's the voice of Bumblebee from Transformers. We've yeah. got to get him on this podcast. Oh. I, I've spoken. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no, he's, we would definitely he's, get him. You know, up there with Jules and that, he's a real A-lister. You know, he's he's done um, a lot of stuff. And also, he knew Lewis Collins from The Professionals. I don't know if you've heard of Lewis Collins. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he ended up passing away in, in in America, but he was like a great British actor. Um, Mark's also um, friends with Jason Connery, who's Sean Connery's son. Mm-hmm. And oh, he's wow. very, very good pals with Ray Winston. Um, you've all heard of Ray Winston in The mm-hmm. British Actor. So yes, we got a little thumbs up from Ray about our film, saying, "I don't know if he's watched it yet, but like you guys, he's not seen it yet." <laughs> black <laughs> sales. Oh yeah, black sales. Yeah. yeah, Mark's in Mark's in black sales. Have you seen that? No. The pirate. Is that the one with? Is that the one with? Uh, uh, supposed to be Blackbeard, but he goes by a different name. Yeah, it might it? be. Yeah, might be. Might be that. I've not watched okay. it myself. It's on Amazon Prime. I need to. Everything's on Amazon Prime. No wonder I can't porn? watch. No, this isn't porn. Black <laughs> Sails <laughs> is a pirate. No, that's on black, that no. porno. That's black lace. <laughs> stuff, stuff now, if it's sails, then it might be a porno, but it's sales. Edward sales. Yeah. What's Edward Fatch, uh, ben? Oh, Ed, ben? Ben's coming in there, chipping in with stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, because I told yeah. him we had like two minutes left, so he's like, "Oh no, no, no! I'm gonna keep throwing shit in the chat." <laughs> yeah. So, so, so talk about so, so people. So people that we need to line up for for podcast is we've got to get Mark Ryan on here. Mm-hmm. We've got to get Jules back on because he's funny and he's good good to have on the show. Steve Kelly, uh, who's once you've seen Penitent, then you'll have an understanding who Steve Kelly is. This guy here. Yes. Um. Uh, and. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if Tony Palmer would come on the show because he's quite elusive. 
I mean, I don't know how he turned up to our film the other night. It was weird. <laughs> we had nobody to watch our film but Tony Palmer. And I thought, hang on a minute. Would I rather a huge crowd of people or Tony Palmer talking about Stanley Kubrick to ourselves? You know, it's like, right, right. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was a good <laughs> yeah. trade off. Have you got any yeah, questions, I Jeff? Yeah. yeah. Any last questions other um, than Rico and Eric? Well, I, 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 I still... <laughs> Unfortunately, I kind of missed a lot of what the hell was going on. <laughs> it turned into a conspiracy show. Have you got any conspiracies that you want to? Oh, I'm you a conspiracy the lighting freak. Conspiracy show, though. Okay, well, you know? what's well, about Joe Biden at the moment? What do you guys think of that prick? The same, obviously, the same thing you do. Uh, yeah, uh, basically. Oh my God. <laughs> Beat the shit out of that man. Like, I'd love to bang his and Boris Johnson's heads together. Or whether they even know what the prime minister's called now. They change every week. Hey, hey I, right. he went toe to toe with corn pop, so I don't know if you want to tangle. Hey, man, him. he's Puerto Rican. Calm down. That's true. He's Puerto Rican. He'll catch you. He'll catch no, you. That's the problem. What the fuck are people thinking voting for him? Or I suppose it's, it's, <laughs> it's those uh, voting. But bo- have you sorted out those voting boxes yet? What are these computers? The, the, what they call <laughs> the, the Dominion. Yeah. Oh God! Has, <laughs> has anybody Dominion seen? The, has anybody seen the new Jeff Dunham special? No, not the new uh, one. No, no. no don't it's it. called don't Me the People. Watch it. That's all that, I'm gonna say about Joe Biden. Is that, watch it. Is that the guy that go. just is that the guy that does the George Soros impressions? He was on with he, um, he does a ventriloquist. It, he, yeah, he has yeah. uh as Walter the he had, uh as Walter, 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 Ahmed. Was, Ahmed. Let's put let's yeah. put it this way. Walter always starts the show and Walter came out as Joe Biden. <laughs> I'm not even fucking kidding you. You have to watch it. And then I'm watching that tonight. Tonight, I'm doing that. son. Yes. I I, I damn near pissed my pants. I was laughing so hard. We gotta I go. Hope he, yeah. I hope he doesn't die soon because I want him to do the full term so everyone can see what a dick he is and then die on the last week. So then Kamala can just have a week. Yes, yeah, at least a week. You get a week of Kamala. You got to have a week of Kamala. Oh what... Well, <laughs> you know, as long as long as they keep him away from stairs, I don't think he's going to die. And bicycles. And bicycles. And bicycles. Yeah, bicycles. And kids. And kids. And kids. And kids. And kids. <laughs> and kids. And pedo. In women's hair. Um, yeah. So, oh, anyway, God. on that note. <laughs> on that note, <laughs> and that's how uh, I roll. <laughs> <laughs> Rico and Eric. Uh, <laughs> where, where, where do you like people following you? Oh, man. First of all, thanks for having us. Yes, uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's always nice to come by, and we appreciate it, man. Um, you can follow us on Facebook on the Rico Podcast. You can follow us on TikTok, Rico yep. Podcast. We have a Patreon and, as well. And you can follow us on Patreon. You'll Patreon be shadow banned now. You'll be shadow <laughs> You'll be shadow banned. You have like, no, you're gonna heart, radio. One... Our heart Radio. I heart Radio, baby. You're going to get one view a week, and you'll be like, hey, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've, uh, we've, I've said, I've ticked all the boxes tonight. This is getting shadow by this one. <laughs> <laughs> I can put this everywhere. <laughs> Martin, where do you like interacting with your fans the best on the socials? Where do I interact with my fans? I don't really on, have any. On other social thing. media. <laughs> As I could tell the other night when on my film show, we had <laughs> really had the film director turn up. <laughs> I don't have any fans, mate. <coughs> mm. uh, Fandus. We're gonna, be, we're, gonna, we're gonna have a cult following. We're gonna have a cult following. That's what we're gonna have. All the conspiracy Amazon theorists. Prime. You can find him. He's there. So you can find him in the show notes up above or down below, folks. If you want to get in touch with this amazing gentleman. So, uh, Mister, I have no power. I'm in the dark. I, I apologize <laughs> to everybody. You That's know, usually I mean, every show. Well, yeah, I'm in the dark a lot, but I mean, this is the real deal now. It's like, what the fuck? Literally. Like, literally, you know? I don't like it because it's dark outside, too. Jeff, you look, like the, the flea. you look like the flea from Chili Peppers, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> <laughs> Are you flea star? Are you flea star? <laughs> I don't know. It does. It looks like the flea. Is that a compliment? <laughs> I mean, I've been told I look like Ray Liotta, but. Webster Films Twitter. Oh yeah, yeah. We got Webster Films Twitter. Uh, we got. You can find us on there. Uh, 
So yeah, so, so let's just go to stilltoken.com. Well, if you go if you go to YouTube, our Webster Films YouTube, we're trying to get some subscribers up there. Like, but uh, you can see the Grail trailer. You can see my ex, the Napoleon film that would have been made, but it's not going to be made. You can see. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the trailer for for Penitent, and what else is on there? Uh, yeah, all kinds it, of cool mate. shit. Now that we've just literally got the trailers up there of the films I wanted to make and ones that I have made and the ones that I haven't made. <laughs> I'm very good at making trailers, them. but not, not the actual full film. Gra- Grail's going to be good, man. Grail's going to be biblical. We need a lot. We need a lot of money to make that. We've got to cash you guys as cameos in that. We're going to have to get you over to the, from the states. Absolutely. One of Sweet. our agent. One of our agents is from the UK. Yes. So. Because we are actually represented by the same agency as Jules. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, so Spencer, Spencer oh. Wilding is one of our agents. Right. And oh, I, cool. I can play a guy in the dark. Yes. <laughs> Where can they find people. you, Jeff? Stilltoken.com. Just go to stilltoken.com <laughs> or Token with the Dead on Facebook. Uh, all the links will be there and you can see all our shit that we're doing. Everything. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, I like, like, I, like, you know, like, like Jeff said, uh, stilltoken.com best place to find us um just hang out when we close out the show martin i know you want to go to bed because you got to get up early and it's like fucking almost midnight no, no, there. No, i'm cool man i'm cool i'm cool um but to uh to all our veterans and first responders we want to thank you for doing what you do so people like us can Absolutely. do what we do we are out of here stay safe we'll see you next week nice